we try to make this clinic stick. Thank you, dog. All right. So why I did this one is because I get to work on a lot of trains. And sometimes I see masterfully done repairs, sometimes less than masterful done. Kit building, same way. Beautiful kits, sometimes less beautiful kits. So go, okay, let's see what glues we should actually use. And I'm gonna tell you my experience about glues. It's by no means exhaustive. It can be even more added to it, but we'll try to walk through what I have right now. All right, if anybody is thinking about sleeping, please let me know so I'll pick up the pace. All right, so going on, on the, about the glues. Uh, really quick, a bit of the history. We'll talk about the different categories and methods to do glues and go through some of the glues and provide toward the end some practice examples and that's why I have a lot of this um, to, to show. It's easy to show them live and discuss about them. I'm not gonna glue anything tonight anyway. Oh, right. Okay. Can anybody stand off their chairs? We just tried some glues on the chairs. All right, everybody, okay, the first question, what were the glues before? There's not much choice. Animal glue, the, out of the hides or hooves, and it was in the furniture, it was even in the musical instruments. A very strong glue, it holds for years, hundreds of years, if you look at the old furniture and musical instruments. Casein glue, it's a protein from milk. This was the original white glue, and probably in the 20s and 30s, if you research, you'd find luggage was made out of casein. It's kind of precursor of the plastic. And the flour glue, if you make really non-toxic, you can do that non-toxic glue by boiling some flour and water and some salt it gets glue. My dad, in the 40s and 50s in Romania, was using that for craft at school, glue stuff. So, you find today flower glue recipe on the internet if you want to look for, if you're really interested. Yes, and it's safe. Where the wood is ecological, right? It's... <laughs> right. Okay. Um, two things to, to talk about how the glues in general work. One of them is, I call it additive, it's because you add the glue between the parts that you glue. It's not going to chemically alter the, the, the parts, it's just going to bond to them very well. The other one, the non-additive, the, 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 non -additive, the welding part, is what you do is, for example, welding two pieces of metal temperature or having uh, plastics, the plastic, and you get a wet in the two pieces of plastic. That's the difference. You can do actually some melting on the plastics if you want on um, uh, plastics that cannot be usually glued, but it's beyond this modeling endeavors. You can go more on the ways to look at the glues. Because th this is what you kind of go through when you want the glue about your particular project. So you know how strong you want it. Um, you want to be flexible. Don't care if it's becoming brittle after a while. How much work time you have to hold the pieces together. You probably don't want to hold for 10 minutes two pieces till they get together. Um, reversible, you want to be able to take or not event for any reasons. Um, conductivity, not all, the, most of the glues are not, but there are, you have some paints that are conductive, for example. And then temperature, if they are resistant or not. Again, less applicants, applicants for modeling, something to look around. I'm thinking especially around bulbs, whenever you have like bulbs in the engines or uh, cars, if they get warm, they may melt some of the glues or smell better. 
okay, the usual materials we work with, and I put the wood, the plastics in there, metal, and everything else on, on, on the side there. So that's pretty much self-explanatory, but just going through over what we glue. I put the wood, I put together also cardboard and paper because the glue used for the wood would work on paper as well. All right, general rules. This is for gluing or painting in general. Clean surfaces, no dust, debris, or grease. Okay, you don't have to be super absolutely pharmaceutically clear, clean, but try to get them reasonably clean. Reasonably smooth, depending on what you want to glue on some of the materials, it's better to have the surfaces a bit rough to, for the glue to catch better. On others, they like nice and smooth surfaces to properly catch. Cyanoacrylate, the super glue, they like the smooth surfaces. The wood glues are like the rougher surfaces. Do not glue over uh, other over paints or another glue because you don't know what was that originally, and if it will adhere. If you glue something over a paint, your bond is going to be as strong as the addition of the paint to the original material. So don't do it. Wood, some wood of the glues, like will go through that wood glues like the PVA, the white glue, you can't stick stuff over it. If you add more white glue on it, it will not stick to itself very well. It will come apart. Okay, and then the next thing, the more contact surface you have, the better, the, the stronger the bond it is. And um, you want dry surfaces, okay? There are some glues that are helped by the uh, wet, but generally work with the dry surfaces. Right. <clears throat> All right. All right. Adhesives. Okay. Going through them. Yeah. Right. It's one of them. <laughs> All right. So we'll go first to the glue. I know it's a bit of an eye chart, but I wanted to just put there everything to have it. It's the uh, handouts. Uh, pretty much all the points. So let's go through them. The, the white glue is the Elmer's glue. It, it is where it's coming. The PVA is polyvinyl acetate. They kind of all smell about the same, the white glues. Dry, dilutes with water, dry. When it's dried, it softens with water after that. And this is what I was mentioning, does not stick good to itself. Okay? It's also a bit flexible, the, the joint. So you're, you're good in most of the cases. The carpenter, the yellow glue, it's a different recipe, and even if it cleans or dilutes its water, once it's dried, it will not revert back. So if you do your ballast with carpenter glue, yellow glue, you will not be able to soften it around to change a piece of the track or switch around. So do your ballast with the white glue, my, my advice. Uh, you'll find this carpenter or yellow glue tight bonds uh, looks like this, right? This two or three, that's on a, another tight bond, right? I don't have any white glue for some reason. Okay. You get the, then you have the stickly glues, alines, or the hobby tag. It's a form of PVA, but just stay tacky for a long while, okay? Kind of rubbery. Um, when you do use these glues on wood paper or cardboard, it will penetrate the fiber, forms the bond, and it's it's pretty strong bond. You get five, ten minutes work time, and also you can use it for the plaster. If you need to put castings on the scenery, the white glue or carpenter glue will stick well to them. They are non mostly non-toxic. Don't try to eat them. Low odor, water based. Okay, mostly. So these are other samples of how you'd find them with wood glue. Um, these are the contact glues you'd have. You'd have these are generally rubber based. They have that good chemical smell. It's the thing that you put on one 
piece and then put it on the other piece, wait for a few minutes for them to dry a bit, stick them together, they are forever there. They come in a tube, they come in a little jar, uh, makes the spray adhesive that is used, use, useful to, to put the printouts on the uh, masonite or other boards. There are different ways to do it. Again, let apply it, let it dry. Once it attach, it's very hard to take it apart. If it's a paper or cardboard, you rip it. If it's something else, you may be able to take it apart. Um, obviously, unsand it easy because it's going to be rubbery. And then glue remains flexible. So whenever you need a joint, something that needs to be flexible or, or bone fabric, for example, the glue, this rubber cement will be good. Uh, so I them too much. I know it's pleasant, I like them, but... But also catch fire, okay? Uh, we have the, uh, the Walters, the Ambroid, the Pliobond. I do like this welder. I don't know, I'm not paid by them, but I, I like these ones. It's the same formula. It just catches pretty quick. So, Ambroid, I think it's out of business, but a lot of people still refer to it. Yeah, they smell good, I know. Makes you think that you really do some work there. All right, so what we're talking about, you can even get like big jars. I have one of those big cans, like a, a quad can, and I keep pouring from it into a small bottle. Okay, uh, cyanoacrylate, the CA glue or the super glue. Okay. To have the main variations of it, it's coming in different thicknesses, a thin or a medium or a gap thin. The body it has will dry also a bit. And the gap filling one, it's useful. Uh, a lot we'll see in the kit building because sometimes if the joints are not perfect, you put some super glue, some gap filling super glue, it will dry up. And then it's sand, it looks like plastic, you can paint, you can do anything to it. <clears throat> um, yes, so it will bond fingers. Uh, use acetone as a debonder. All that thing that they sell as a debonder for super glue for $5 this small bottle is just acetone. So acetone will do it. What about super glue that people don't realize? It tends to be brittle. It, it, it will crack if you doesn't have much mechanical resistance. It will crack really easy. So you can put antennas and stuff with the super glue. If you touch them, sometimes they may crack, just fall out. Um, fumes are toxic. And uh, if you use a lot, I have one that glued like a, an entire canopy for a passenger platform over for an entire night the next day. He was into the emergency room with oxygen mask because it affected his lungs. He was fine after, but, but it is irritant. We have the Loctites and the Zappa gaps. The Zappa gaps are the ones that you find uh, at Hobby Town. A lot of them, different colors are different thicknesses, and also you have different bottle sizes on them. <clears throat> okay. Usual, your usual small tubes in the, in the Gorilla or the Loctite, the small tubes that they came on, everybody's fine. Okay, the question was if there is any difference between the Gorilla glue and the, uh, the Loctite. So the Gorilla glues, I think their discussion comes because the Gorilla glues as a family, they use a lot of polyurethane glues. But when they talk about strictly the CA, it's probably still CA. Once you learn, once you get familiar to how it works, it's either one. I like the Loctite, not for, I have some tubes of a no name thing that are 10 years old. I punch them, they still work. So this small tube, so it, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Once you punch them, they 
pretty fast. Uh, my okay, there are millions of opinions out in the internet how to preserve the super glues. My, what work for me, I keep them in a jar with a lid that I keep them. So, I don't, like these ones, I have a jar like from whatever with a lid that I can screw on. It's airtight and they last pretty long for me. I mean, like year, no, not a problem. And keep the lip clean. Yeah, th there's another opinion. I never tried it, I can't tell, but I've, I've seen that people saying, yeah, put it in the refrigerator. In principle, if it's cooler, probably it's like less active. So they dry with the in the air. That's why they would dry if they're uh, exposed to air. That's why you have also the accelerator. And there's this whole big discussion. If you put the super glue on your big part and the accelerator on the small part or vice versa, you can go on the forums and dive into that discussion and entertain you for a while. Okay, plastic glues. And this is probably the meat that is interesting for us. Plastic glues or plastic cements. And in general, it's a solvent that will melt the plastic and provide a weld between the two, two pieces. It can be a liquid or sometimes they would pull different amounts of clear plastic in it and give some more body to it. If you put even more plastic and some other fillers and you get a putty to fill, to, to fill gaps. My experience, and that's why I have a bunch of glues, of plastic glues, some of them work better with the plus some plastics than the others. That's why they have the different uh, variations. We'll, we'll get there what, uh, what the plastics are that we use mostly in the modeling. And um, then there are also some cheap, uh, not cheaper, sorry, uh, I was looking for the alternatives that are not toxic, it's for the kids to play with them. They will still bond plastic, but they are more like making a joint by addition, like a PVA type glue, like a white glue type thing. So it will not be as strong. You can actually crack them easily and it will, your kit will return to the kit form, basically, if you want to. Yeah, that non-toxic one. Yeah, yeah. What what was that? The solvent? The lime on it. Okay. Solvent that is the non toxic uh, solvent that stores non toxic version of the glue. And the joints are not as good, but you know, if you have kids, probably playing with that, probably it's a good thing. Uh, cheap alternatives on this MEK, everybody knows about it, and acetones. You buy them in the little, in the thin jars for much. Lower price. I never the MEK personally, but I know people that swear by it. All right. A disclaimer: fumes, plastic, and flammable. Okay. Smell nice. I like the good glue. All right. <clears throat> we'll go. Uh, probably it's a good way to do it now. So I do like the Tamiya glues. Okay. They, if you don't know, they have like three different varieties of them. I uh, can see them very well. So the most important one that I want to show, there are like two green caps. Let me try, hard to do it with one hand. Two green caps, a dark green and a lighter green. The darker green, they call it the um, extra thin cement. The light green, they call it still extra thin, but it's slightly different formulation, works different on the plastic. The lighter green dries like super fast. It's like a matter of a second, seconds. Three, four, five seconds and it's dried. This takes 10, 15 seconds. It's still very fast. I like how it bonds with most of the, the plastics that we use. This one is the with the orange cap, has a bit more body into it, still bonds really, really good. Yeah, we had the Plastruck has Actually, two versions of it. I'm having uh, so Plastruck, as you see it here in the slide, 
the plastic bonding and the plastic weld. The bonding is starting an IBS, while the orange one is for like general purpose. So the white one does better for our models on that. There was the Tenax glue that everybody liked it. It's about the same formula like once the flexophile weld and Micromark has the thing that is called same stuff because the same stuff. So these are also pretty good glues. Yes. Yes. All of them. So the question from Joe is like, which of the, the glues work with ABS? All of them would, would work and I'm gonna get there. It's actually what we have in the models. It can be pure ABS, can be pure polystyrene. Most of the time it's a mixture of them to give different properties to the plastic. So you could try it. So I might tell you that this works, it works for me, but maybe your kit is slightly different plastic formulation and might not work as well. So in my case, the Tamiya, the light, very light green uh, cap doesn't work as well as the darker green cap. So again, my, my experience is on them. So plastic weld probably has stronger solvents in it, the, the orange from Plastroct. Okay, the other thing you want to experiment, some of these plastic glues, the cements, will craze clear plastic more or less. So if you make a mistake, maybe it will dry up and it will still be clear. Other of them will actually craze it and make it whitish, even the, the plastic cement. So again, depending on the parts you glue, the plastic is there, they may work or not. For clearing the, sorry, gluing clear plastic parts, there is the, what they call the canopy glue, which is a version of the white glue, but specifically formulated to dry crystal clear. So we'll touch on that. Uh, moving on to the epoxies and the polyurethanes. Um, most of the, what we have is the epoxies. You know them, the ones that you have two syringes, you squeeze them, mix them well. These are like really good, strong mechanical bonds if you, if you need. You can do them, if I need to do metal parts that I need to glue, um, sorry, yeah, to bond them together, I would use like the um, epoxies. I put here the polyurethanes because what I was saying earlier, the Gorilla glues, uh, it's, a, it's a version of the polyurethane. That's what they use that there. You'd have on the epoxies, if you look on the tubes, they would have a working time. It can be a minute or five minutes or 20 minutes. So this gives you time to position the pieces, depends how much you want to hold them together. Uh, also into the epoxy category, you'd have the, the milliputs or the, the, the um, there's another one, that it need needable steel or something like this is actually two uh, parties that you mix them by hand. One that they uh, are mixed well, 24 hours later, later they do harden really, really good. So I, I use sometimes milliput to do parts on the on the cars or on the engines. You stand it, drill it, and you, it is very strong. Uh, you can even thread some of them. Okay, uh, again, epoxies and polyurethanes are, especially the polyurethanes, are irritant for, for, uh, for your lungs. So be careful with them. I'm not the guy that goes with the respirator and rubber gloves up to my elbows, but I'm trying not to be with the nose right in there with, with them. Uh, all the VOCs, that's why they took out the VOCs, in long run, they do attack the nervous system. So that's the the way why they try to take out the VOCs from the paints and glues and all of this. But again, we're not here in the business of that. Just saying, okay. You have, okay, put the mini put up there. You'd have the uh, little uh, bottles with epoxies that you mix. 
sometimes this will come most of them are one to one sometimes there will be like one to ten mixing ratios if anybody use like car body put putty that comes into a big jar with the base and the powder, it's a small jar I'm sorry. That's a pot, yes. It's two two sticks like plastiline, and you mix them together till you get a uniform color, and they would uh, in that form that you leave them. Yeah. You can find it pretty pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they have two versions of the milliput. I think it's a red, uh, a red box and a black box. I think they have different uh, hardening times. They are about where well, they were a few years ago, about seven dollars. Uh, but they will last you long as long as you don't mix them. They will last you long. Okay. Constructions adhesives. That's more for the. Don't, not for the model, but for general <laughs> scenery, benchwork type things. And um, they, would, they would generally, the, the, the most, the liquid nails like this, it's, it's actually a contact cement. It's a rubbery thing that dries. It, it's super strong. I have the studs in my basement gl glued with that on the concrete. So yeah, pretty strong. Uh, silicones, people use them to fit the motors in the steam engines. I am against it, but that's my thing because you can't take that motor to adjust it after that. Okay, uh, you have the acrylic latex adhesives. I mean, you can use the silicones and the acrylic, uh, the, the latex uh, tubes to do scenery. People do a lot of water effects with the silicone for the, the, the scenery, like the clear silicone. You do nice waves, put some, color on them, good to go. Um, one thing, blue foam, I think this panel and foam. So there are some tubes that say that they are safe for the foam because it will not melt them. So if you want to use, uh, to, to glue your scenery out of the, the, the foams, this is the, the one to, to take. Also, I've seen this, I used it actually for someone to do track, laying the track over the foam spread it in the middle, put the track with the pins, it will stay there really good. I prefer to do a mechanical, I make a mount packet and that's why I prefer to do it. <laughs> yeah, that, my problem is that if I want to do other repair, like adjustments or play later, it's like, okay, you have break the silicone, and then you have to wait another 24 hours to be able to tweak it. That's that's why. All right, multitude of silicones. And uh, I put on the liquid nail for the, the foam boards on the, on the right side there, or the clear silicone on the left. Again, it, it's using the silicones for different groups can be a bit of um experimentation some things may actually you know pop in your mind actually i could use a contact cement or i can use a hot glue which i'm going to go, i think next right hot glues i'm not going to have pictures for them because everybody knows what they are and um, i think the best the most important thing is that the high temp one will burn the skin and make a blister the low temp will just hurt so all right, do not use that uh, on metal because the metal will take the uh, heat really quick out of the hot glue. It will not stick as well. It will stick for a while, but not very well. So they, I, I use a lot of the hot glues to glue like uh, speakers to the enclosures or put the speakers in the engines because it's one of the things that I can break it later if I don't like it. Most of the time it's like, okay, I'm 99, okay, 95% done with the project. Okay, let me try to put the shell on top of the engine. Oops, the speaker is in the wrong space. I needed half an inch, no less, an eighth of an inch to the right. So 
I just break it off the hot glue, move it over, and I'm done. I realized I should have added the double-sided uh, tape, the, but I realized it too later. That's another way to bond things. I use it for decoders or, again, for the speakers to install it, and it comes in different strengths. You know, the gray one or the clear one, depends what you like to, to use. Okay. Um, other questions so far? I put anybody to sleep? A couple. Okay. All right. Yes. Not really. Not really. They have them in the sprays, but they're also in the bottles. You can buy them in the bottles. I think you may have them in the bottles too. Oh, the question was about the accelerators for the super glues. If I use them a lot, I tend not to because the ones in the spray get all over the place. That's Scott comment as well. But yes, right. But also you can buy them in the bottles so you can put a drop in there to just accelerate that joint. I found that with the accelerator makes the joint even more brittle because the super glue dries really fast, like solidifies really fast. Again, my experience with the Loctite, I, I, I get the Loctite for no reason. It's just because the Walmart near me has it. Yeah, but some, sometimes you want to, to have, you find it in the military guys, they will say, okay, I put here a drop of the glue on the main part, and then I put accelerator on the detail part, and in the moment I touch it, it stays there for, well, almost forever. So it's like instant bond, so you don't have to hold it there till it's drying up. But again, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. all right. All right, uh, as I was saying, in practice, it's a science and art in the same time. Of my finger, somebody else was doing that because it's actually a Revel glue. No, nothing with them, I just don't find them commonly here. You might have actually some Revel in the store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, basically, every company that makes plastic kits or paints will have a version of plastic cement. So, many, many choices. <laughs> it, it was one of the cements, the ones with the uh, like more uh, body into them. So the, the, they dry. If the kit is probably one or two years on the shelves or warehouses, they will dry up. Yeah. True. That's that's new them. Yeah. So the question was, yeah, on the new glues, uh, about the UV cure glues, they are very much used in, uh, in the phones. All your phones are put together with UV cure glues or your, uh, dental fillings, actually the same kind of material with a UV cure. So basically liquid that you buy in a tube, very thin li liquid, it spreads all over, then put the parts in place and then you have a little UV light LEDs and then you just really cure it with that, just move around. You, you know when your dentist does a filling and has that gun with the UV light, that's pretty much what you do with the glue. I use that for acting screen protectors on the phones, but I did not use them for modeling yet. Have you used them? Is the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay so, so the UV um, glues, good use for them to glue together 3D printed parts, especially the, um, photo, the, the resin 3D printed parts. Which are for, it's a photo resin, right? So because the, the materials are similar and they bond very, very well. Okay, so th these are the questions when I have uh, something to, to glue, I, 
those all the questions all the a new challenge to glue right how does strong the joint or bone needs to be right as i was saying um speakers in the engines i want to be there no but nobody's going to pull on them and i want to be able to move them if i need so i use the hot glue or the double sided uh, tape uh you have it to assure the good bond for what you need right if you try to glue two pieces of plastic on the edge usually you don't get super strong glue super strong bond okay it will be visible if not i'm gonna make a mess just like creative stuff uh could you wreck something else around when gluing this comes to the paint a lot of the plastic cements will attack the paint therefore it will mess the paint job on the engine so you have a crack on the engine you try to glue it if you put it through the front the glue it will mess up the paint around that crack sometimes visible sometimes if you're lucky not but usually i prefer to put them from the back and very very little and again need to be permanent or need possible to to take it apart same same discussion silicones come handy in here when you need to take them apart because you can cut them slice them nicely and then you can clean them from the parts you glued which you need to all right bench work white glue or carpenter glue don't just glue it put some screws to them but if you put screws and glue you're forever liquid nails really good uh gorilla glue uh, a, a lot of people uh, woodworkers would use the gorilla glues and the yellow glues to to build the thing a, a version of the how do you say the polyurethane glues is actually what goes into the marine how do you say marine marine plywoods that are impervious to water that's kind of the best strength you can get out of the glue the polyurethanes are the thing track line track as I said, put tax them and liquid nails or home adhesive. If you want them removable, put your white glue because you can soften it later with water. If you do the hand laid track, which Brian is not here, but um, ties on the plywood or the cork, put the wood glue or the contact cement and the track on ties. Sometimes uh, people use extra contact cement secondary to spikes you you see the, the fast track people talk about using attaching first the uh, track to the ties with bond because it's supposedly also a bit more resistant to temperature when you come and solder around uh, on the joints okay on the scenery you mostly have a lot of cardboard web over the bench work fastest way hot glue go just around it'll be good right craft paper wood glues you sometimes you dilute it or not depends what your style uh same for the grass and foliage wood glues like white glues are the, the most efficient here um the track ballast right you put the full strength glue on the side on the shoulders of the cork or the diluted as you drip it so you secure everything in place and then as i said plus the rock castings you can use the full strength wood glue just put them there and it will stay because the, the glue would actually soak into the plastic that's the reason or if you need the in a kit if you have plaster parts again white glue would would work very very well Okay, a little bit more about the engines and cars. I already talked through some of the, the points in here. Um, the shells are um, ABS or polystyrene. And most of these plastic cements will work with both. That's what I'm saying. I was saying experiment, whatever you have. That's why I have so many glues. If I find one that it doesn't really melt, my my test to to see how the glue works for a plastic i find a place is not going to be visible put a drop there and if i can leave good fingerprint into it it works well <laughs> so yeah if it's not fingerprint then probably doesn't melt the plastic that well so i'm trying another one after that 
uh, clear parts like windows. I use, I use actually the the uh, plastic cement and just let, touch it with the um, uh, brush or with the brush that comes into the the bottles and let it sweep between the plastic and the wall. Let's say if it's a building or the wall of the the shell, and it will just dry there by um, be drawn into there without messing the rest of it. So the efficient, very quick gives you a quick uh, uh, quick work so you can go around uh, do not use everybody knows do not use the super glue for clear plastic because my personal well talking again personal experience the loctite didn't fog as much as the others um, again clear exp my experience it will fog more if it's an enclosed space. If you do a building and it has some air to go through, it will not fog as much or maybe at all. So again, experiment with, with them. Metal to plastic part, cement a little bit, epoxy if you need it like really strong. There are things you can repair and you cannot really repair. It's like, okay, you sometimes, or most of the, Metal chassis of the engines are from the, the zinc die cast. You can attempt to glue them with uh, together back with uh, uh, epoxy, but I'm not sure if it's going to stay in a good shape. It may be a temporary fix, not a really forever fix. Uh, we come down to the acetal parts, you know, the slippery, the slippery plastic that goes on the trucks or the handrails. That one is very hard to properly glue. You can use some of the rubber cement, the contact cements very little because it will just stick to it. But again, in the longer run, it's it's questionable. I don't know, anybody has better ideas on that? I have seen a long ago, some super glues that had a special prep solution. So the, the blister had the super glue and the prep solution that you'd apply on the acetal to help bonding. I never tried it. It was, I haven't seen it since then. Okay, uh, metal to metal, again, CA works, epoxy, contact cement. I, I've seen engines repair with the contact cement. Uh, not really great, but it can be done, okay? If it can be soldered, you're soldering. That's, that's much better. And the silicone cork for mounting the engines. Uh, what you have now a lot out, out there, you have so-called multimedia kits where you have plastic, you have resin parts, you have photo etch or like metal parts. You can build a lot of kits like this, the newer kits, especially on the armor or planes. Armor mostly you'll find that and planes when you find the, the cockpit with photo etch and so on. Less on the trains, but if you need to glue stuff that is totally different, do use the, the CAs or epoxies if you have the, the time to, to mix them in the quantities. I just found this is beautiful work on that. But you see, again, the yellowish parts are the resin, the white part is the plastic, pla white and gray, and then you have the copper and brass tubing around. So pretty complicated there. It's probably mostly put together with CA. And then on my DCC installs that again, my experience, the sample there is not mine. I never have good end, good pictures of my installs. So um, liquid tape, which is still a rubber dissolved into a solvent. It's the, the thing that you actually, it's, it comes like this. And it's used to insulate the joints. I, most of the time I prefer to use uh, shrink tubing but if I really tight on space, I use this because it dries good. The other thing that I use the liquid tape, if I do connectors for DCC, for the engine to tender things, I use them to insulate at the end of the connector and it's also like stress relief for the wires, makes, uh, makes good air. Um, again, other use for the liquid tape, you know those pesky pilot wheels that touch the cylinders on the brass engines? 
whenever those touch, if you put this liquid tape, it's, it's insulating and also it's harder to rub off than a paint. In the past, people were putting like nail polish, but that one it's brittle or it falls off. This uh, being rubbery it lasts longer. Uh, speaker installs and buffers, hot glue, contact cement, silicone cork. I, I like this contact cement because it catches very fairly fast and I still can move it a little bit after that. Uh, fixing and routing wires, again, hot glue, or contact them and um, my to-go solution, if I need to wire, route wires through the shell, I put the wire there, put a drop of CA, wet the finger, and then just press that drop of hot glue over and it stays there very, very well. Um, LEDs, hot glue, the same, contact cement or CA. And the bulbs, you'll have to be mindful that they can get hot and uh, soften some of the glues. So I usually try to just leave the bulbs hanging in the wire if I need to do bulbs, in the air, if I need to do bulbs, because in this way, they dissipate. And I'm trying not to put the bulbs near the plastic parts because they may melt. And I think that's about it for my experiences. And thank you for not sleeping. <laughs> Thank you, video. That was really good. You know, the one thing I've run into, it c combines a couple of uh, issues that he talked about.